Hmm, that's a pretty good scenery tip. Learn more about scenic adhesive and wetting agents this week on Cody's Office. Hi, I'm Cody Grivno and welcome to this week's installment of Cody's Office. We have four great new products for you, so let's get started. First up this week is this great northern wood transfer caboose from American Model Builders. The laser cut wood HO scale model sells for $46.95. This kit has cast resin steps with wood platforms and center sill, peel and stick wood windows and doors, laser cut end railings and ladders, and a handrail bending jig. This kit includes parts to build the caboose as either a Great Northern or Burlington Northern model. Our second product this week is the Canadian Pacific 65-foot gondola from Xactrail. The HO scale ready-to-run model sells for $34.95. The gondola uses KD number 58 knuckle couplers and features see-through crossover platforms and separately applied ladders and brake wheel. The car interior has molded floorboard detail. In addition, the car features 100-ton ride control trucks 36-inch CNC machine metal wheel sets, and underbody brake detail. The gondola is decorated for CP only and is available in 12 road numbers. Next up are these two new freight cars from Microtrains. The 40-foot box car sells for $19.90 and the 39-foot single dome tank car sells for $21.40. The box car uses Microtrains trucks and knuckle couplers and has sliding doors. In addition, the model includes laser cut cardstock grain doors. The tank car features separately applied handrails and modeler installed placards. You can find these and other Microtrains cars at your local hobby shop. Our final product this week is the HO Scale Electromotive Division SD40-2 High Hood Diesel Locomotive from Broadway Limited Imports. Models with the firm's Paragon 2 DCC and sound system sell for $249.99. Models without sound sell for $149.99. This particular model features sound, so let's go down to our Wisconsin and Southern project layout and have a listen. Well, as you can hear, this High Hood SD40-2 has a really nice sound system. Some of the model's other features include railroad-specific details, factory-applied lift rings and grab irons, plastic handrails, and detailed trucks. Some of the sound effects include the bell and air horn. As you can see, the ditch lights flash in an alternating pattern when the horn is activated. The model is available in four different road names and six different paint schemes. For the latest product information, be sure to visit the new product section of ModelRareOrder.com. Well, here we are down in the MR workshop for this week's modeling tip. Today I'm going to show you some handy tips for bracing joints on plastic kits with strip styrene. Here I have two halves of a grain silo that I need to put together. Now fortunately I'm, in this case I have these little channels here that I can nest the styrene in. So I'm going to take this piece of strip styrene, I've already marked off how much I need and just snip it off. So I'm going to go ahead and take the strip styrene and just nest it into the channel here. Now it's going to be tough to get the piece to stay in all together at once, as you can see here by me struggling a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just tack it in with some liquid styrene cement. And then we're just going to go and work our way around the joint until it's all glued in place. As you can see, this styrene strip has created a nice little lip here. And that will make it easier to seat the other half of the silo. I'm going to go ahead and roughly align the two halves of the silo. Then as I did the first time, I'm just going to just use a few drops of the styrene cement to tack this in place. Then I'm going to do my final alignment and then secure the joint with more glue. All right, this looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and let the glue dry, and then we'll do any final filing and touch-up work on the joint from the exterior. Now, thin styrene is wonderful for joints like this. However, if you want to reinforce joints and make a structure more solid, you're going to need to use thicker stock. For example, I have this power plant building here that was featured in the February 2010 issue of Model Railroader. Because this is a low relief building, it needs some sort of reinforcement to keep the styrene from curling in and just to make the structure sound. And on the inside here, 
you can see some of the different joint work I did. I used some of the thinner strip here where I had the butt joint forming the two pieces of the wall. To add reinforcement, I used this thicker styrene strip. If I remember correctly, it was a 0.250 by 0.250. I used the thicker styrene stock where the plastic was susceptible to breaking or warping. These are just a couple of easy tips for bracing your plastic structures. I hope you give them a try. No, I'm not opening my own hardware store. We're on to this week's viewer mail. We've had several questions lately after our scenery segments that we've featured in the modeling tips. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different adhesives used for applying scenery and wetting agents. We'll start off with the adhesives. People like to mix their own adhesives. You can use either white glue or matte medium. If you use white glue, mix it at a 40% glue to 60% water ratio with a few drops of liquid dish soap added. Some modelers prefer using matte medium. If you use this product, mix it at a 50-50 ratio with water. Again, throw in a few drops of liquid dish soap. You can mix your glue in old containers, such as this contact solution bottle. Be sure to wipe the tip off after each use to prevent it from clogging. Another option is to go to the hobby shop and buy ready-made scenery adhesives, such as Scenics Mint from Woodland Scenics. It comes pre-mixed, and all you have to do is give the bottle a shake, and you're ready to apply it. With wetting agents, it's really a matter of personal preference. A lot of people like to use wet water because it's a lot cheaper to get. All you have to do is fill a spray bottle such as this one here with some water, put in a few drops of liquid dish soap, and you're ready to go. I happen to prefer using 70% isopropyl alcohol, such as this here, because it evaporates quicker. No matter what you use, it's a good idea to always wet your scenery before you apply the glue. This helps break down the surface tension and help the scenic cement wick in quicker. We've also had some questions on where you get pipettes. Uh, the ones we get here are from Tester Model Master. You can order these through the Walther's catalog. In addition, you can find pipettes at stores that specialize in remote control planes and cars. They use pipettes for transferring fuel, but you can certainly use them for applying scenery or mixing paint. Well, I hope that answers some of your scenery questions. That's it for this week's episode. We'll see you all back here next week on Cody's Office. You know, this, this Corey Gravino guy is a really good model. <laughs> <laughs>